This one's going to be about concerns for drawing fabric. Um, and this part will be about drawing sort of just a f pile of fabric. Um, so one of the uh, assignments is egg to draw eggs in fabric or eggs sitting on fabric. Um, practical thing so the eggs don't roll off. Um, but also to give you a challenge for the contrast of a solid form and something a little more formless. Um, so drawing a pile of fabric is different than drawing fabric over something. So let's start with just a pile. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. One way to do it is to kind of go through an overall gesture of the pile and find the major areas and work into it from there. Um, and I think this is a pretty good way. That's kind of the way I recommend for most people to, to go about this and, uh, and finish this off. Another way to do it is kind of to do like the front back overlapping method, which would kind of be like, um, you would start with the areas of fabric that are in, in the front, work on those large shapes and then work them backwards. And basically what you're doing here is creating a bunch of series of overlapping shapes. Back in space. And I think either method will work because you're doing basically the same sort of thing. It's just a different way to think about it. Um, and sometimes thinking about it differently can unlock um, what you're kind of what you're doing and unlock your brain a little bit. So I think there's room there's room for both. Um, and if you want to switch between them, I think that's good as well. So um, let's, I, I like to use the gesture one most of the time, so I'm just going to roll with that. Um, so what I'm going to kind of do is do this gesture. When I do this gesture, I'm kind of thinking about this ground plane that it's sitting on because it's sitting on a larger ground plane that's more or less like, like this, right? It's basically on this table here. And then I'm going to go in with the gesture and find, you know, major areas of motion. And I'm going to let those flow across to each other. And they don't have to be perfect or exact to what's there. Um, because what we're after is motion. We're not after accuracy yet. And I think if, you know, the ironic thing is if you play with this motion idea and you run with it, what happens is you actually get really accurate. Um, and I find that that's kind of, that shocks a lot of, a lot of people because you're not really focusing on being accurate. You're focusing on something else. And by doing that, you kind of, your eye just sort of naturally does things correctly, which is a bit strange and counterintuitive. So I've got a little gesture here of what this might look like. So now what I have to do is kind of um, go in and fill in some some form details um, that I kind of missed out. Um, there's some categories of, of folds. Um, and I don't necessarily think you have to memorize all those, but I do think you kind of have to um, pay attention to kind of figure out what they are. And this is where overlap is really going to come in handy, right? Because what you're going to find are forms are going to kind of tuck into each other and behind each other. And you're going to want to be able to kind of track those forms. And if you're used to drawing um, organic forms, you'll be able to, to pick up on a lot of these, these things that are happening. And in this stage, you kind of actually want to exaggerate a little bit of the motion that you found, because if you don't, you're going to kind of deaden your, your drawing. Everything will get a little bit too straight and too boring. Um, 
and you can pick up on little details like where there's a fold in this direction, this, the outer contour is going to kind of push up. And then sometimes there are these little abrupt folds that kind of create these little points. So you can pick up on those. And go from there. And I think um, you can actually have a lot of fun drawing fabric, I think, because it's um, it's all about flow. And um, once you start to establish some of the major areas, you'll begin, everything will kind of begin to, to lock in and come together. And that's when things get really interesting because you're working to the point where you can start getting uh, getting to a sense of light and that's always a good time. So if things aren't perfect and um, and not exactly accurate, that's okay because you're still going to be able to create something convincing. So the next stage, um, and I'm going to leave some unfinished stages here, is to work into the poster. So any place that you think that you see that's dark and has shadow, you're just going to put a light shadow tone down. Um, and this is kind of like, you know, kind of a half tone, right? It's not the full dark, right? We're not going to, to this tone and we're certainly not going to the absolute dark yet. We're just going to, um, something a little more, um, a little more non-committal. And it doesn't matter whether the tone you see is absolute dark or not, you're just going to put in this half tone. Because what we're going to do is work in passes and go back through and get the full tones that we need. And we'll start to differentiate and separate these out. But for now, I think it's really easy to, um, to begin with tones that aren't aren't particularly differentiated. So you just go through and um, this is more or less what we what we call the the poster. And it's basically a two tone differentiation between light and dark. And if you've had class with me before, you know what this is and you know how to go go about it we use it so much. Okay. So next we go into these other tones. So we've got our little, our little half tone, we've got a three quarter tone and we've got our full dark. Now next stage you can do either one. You can go to full dark or to this, um, to this near dark tone. So here, I know that there are some places that I'm gonna treat as full darks, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do those. And they're gonna kind of jump out and be a little bit funky because it's kind of disconnected from the tonal range that I've put down. But that doesn't matter yet. Because I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna make some more further changes. I'm basically just going to go straight to it and push really hard and get that tone down. And I want at least four places um, to have that super dark tone um, because that's going to help make things um, really uh, high contrast and it'll make it stand out. The next thing to do, um, depending on which order, is you're either going to go to the darks or this three-quarter tone. So, you know, you can remind yourself of what that tone feels like, how much pressure it's going to take to get to that tone, and then you're going to go in and fill in those areas, right? 
So it takes a fair amount of pressure, but not a huge amount of pressure to get there. And you want to be sure that this is definitely distinct from your lighter half tone or quarter tone that you did. So essentially what we're working with here is four values. We got white, black, um, light gray, dark gray. And I think that's a good, um, a good place to start. And you're just going to take a pass and work your way all the way through through the fabric. And this works for any object really, you know, it doesn't have to be fabric. Um, this is the same process you go through to draw anything. Um, if you've missed any areas, you can come back and pick up that quarter tone. And what you're going to do here is also think about emphasizing form and emphasizing overlap. You can come back and pick up lines if you want. Um, that's fine too. And what you think of in terms of overlap is creating a bunch of these, wherever these lines like kind of intersect, um, there's this principle called like the T, right? So if there's a line here and there, and you hit the line there, you're going to create overlap. And if you kind of create more and more areas of overlap, things get a little more interesting. What you want to avoid are basically intersections, right? Where if you, if you create overlap here, you don't want the next thing to hit there because that kind of looks a little bit funky. So just pay attention to that as you build up the drawing. and just continue to work around into these half tones. And you may need to find and you may find that you need to like extend out some of the full darks or and or the quarter tones. That quarter tone definitely needs to get pushed into half tone and that light needs to get put pushed to a quarter tone right there. And so eventually what's going to happen is this is all going to really start to look like fabric. And if you have a line, maybe, um, you know, you want to preserve this little bit of light along the line, like here, and then come back through and make these tones overlap. Right? That's kind of what's going on with this bit here. You can put a faint tone up to that line to kind of push this area back. So there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks and tools at work. You're using line and you're losing, you're using tone, you're using overlap, right? And then any areas where you don't have you don't have a differentiation like here, you don't want to just depend on line. You can come back and change the tone as well. So anytime you kind of use a couple of tools to differentiate, it's going to um, emphasize things a little bit better. Okay. And then you're just going to work your way through the fabric. And then the other thing too with line, is you don't want the line to all be the same, right? It can be, um, that line can be varied. It can be um, real wide. It can be wide and faint, right? It can be wide and dark. And then you can get down to like pinpoint lines where they're like pinpointed lines. 
And then if you do that, you can also go pinpointed but faint, pinpointed in, in kind of the mid-tones, and then you can do pinpointed and dark, right? And so using that whole range of line is going to, to help you create more interesting drawings overall. Right? If you only use any one type of these, it's just going to get really monotonous and really boring to look at, and you're not going to like the results of it. And you can just go through and just keep picking up more and more detail, keep reobserving, keep making things more interesting as you move along, right? You can pick up areas of quarter tone that you missed on the first pass, you can push some quarter tone down. And then as you get into the later and later stages, you can begin to add tones in between these, right? Like you can add, you know, a really faint tone in between the white and the quarter tone. You can add something between quarter tone and half tone. And you can add, you know, something between half and full dark, right? So this is basically about extending the value range once you've established your, your basic areas, right? But you gotta get your basic areas of value working before you go any further, right? And as you work into the whole areas of fabric, you know, that's just gonna look better and better the more detail you get in there. And then you probably don't need to erase, but if you if you um, find an area where you've you've put too wide of a line and you need to come back and erase, you can do that. Um, but you'll probably find that that you won't necessarily need to do that in most situations, unless you are working, um, you know, with the uh, the tone paper and you're doing the black and white on on or black. Uh, or white and sanguine or something like that on tone paper, you'll probably have to come back in and, and do a little bit of erasing just to clear out um, areas so you can switch the different to the different um, uh, pencils and, and tones and everything. So that's something to pay attention to as well. But that's a quick demo of just like um, doing, you know, just a pile of fabric um, and getting it kind of blocked in. I think that's the, the biggest thing. Most people have trouble with just getting it blocked in.